guys welcome to the med concepts with bhavya and today we are going to go through the third part of the ulna bone series and which is going to be the attachments and the clinical anatomy of the ulna bone so first we will go through the attachments on the ulna bone and then we will be talking about the clinical anatomy that is related to the ulna bone so without any further ado let's get into the video so as i told you first we would be discussing about the attachments on the ulna bone and we will be first talking about the insertions on the ulna bone and i have already mentioned it several times that the insertions would be colored or marked with blue so we have the blue markings over here which is the insertions on the ulna bone and here we are going to talk about three insertions of the ulna bone first naming those three insertions they are going to be the triceps brachii the brachialis and the anconius now one by one we will find out where they are inserted okay so now the first one is the triceps brachii which you see here this part the triceps brachii so when you talk about triceps brachii the triceps brachii is attached in the rough posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process let me break these words and explain you properly see this is the olecranon process right so this is the olecranon process this one the full thing is the olecranon process and we know that from the features video that this is the superior surface in the superior surface we have anterior part and then we have rough posterior part so there is where your triceps brachii gets attached in the rough posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process so this is all about the triceps brachii now we will talk about the brachialis now talking about the brachialis brachialis is inserted here do you see the triangular area where we have marked blue this is where is brachialis attaching or inserting so what do this part known as this part is known as the anterior surface of the coronoid process when we talked about features of the ulna we talked about the coronoid process surfaces right and when we talked about the coronoid surfaces you must recall that we talked about anterior surface which is triangular in shape right this is where that is the anterior surface of the coronoid process your brachialis gets attached that is all about the brachialis and now we are going to talk about the third and the last insertion the third and the last insertion is the anconius the anconius muscle gets inserted on the upper end of the ulna let me show you where you just have to turn to the lateral aspect of the olecranon see this is the olecranon right so the lateral aspect of the olecranon this part and also the upper 1/4 of the posterior surface of shaft see i have already marked here the posterior surface so the upper 1/4 of the posterior surface of shaft and the lateral aspect of the olecranon process this is the place where your anconius muscle attaches so let us recap together the first one is going to be your triceps brachii on the posterior part of superior surface of the olecranon process then going to the anterior part we have the brachialis muscle inserted in the triangular surface that is the anterior surface of the coronoid process then if we go to the lateral aspect of the olecranon process and also the 1/4 part of the posterior surface we have the attachment or the insertion you must say of the anconius muscle so anconius brachialis and your triceps brachii now we are done with the insertions and now we are going to talk about the red markings that is the origins from the ulna bone now talking about the attachments we have totally 10 attachments on the ulna bone and we will talk about them in groups first we will be talking about the supinator crest that is this part let me show you this is the supinator crest where we have the attachment or origination of the supinator muscle then going to the medial side to the medial margin of the coronoid see this is what is the coronoid process right so the medial margin of coronoid has two muscles origination one is 
the pronata teres which is the down one and another one is the flexa digitorum superficialis let me show it very clearly when you see closely what you see here is this is the coronoid process right this is the coronoid process and the medial margin of the coronoid process that is, that is this part has two origins of two muscles has origin of two muscles one is your pronator teres and the above one is your flexor digitorum superficialis now now we have talked about the pronator teres and the flexor digitorum superficialis right and the another one that we see here is this one which is your flexor carpi ulnaris and this is going to be the ulnar head okay so flexor carpi ulnaris ulnar head would be attached or would be originating from here this part that is the medial side of the olecranon process and also from the posterior border so from the medial surface or medial side of the olecranon process and from the posterior border we will have the ulnar head of flexor carpi ulnaris getting originated so in the above part that is in the upper part we see the first one that is supinator from the supinator crest right then we see in the medial margin of the coronoid process we see the pronator teres and flexor digitorum superficiae superficialis and then the last one that we see here is in the medial side of the olecranon process which is the ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris now when you see now when you see the very largest origin of the muscle on the ulnar bone that muscle's name is your flexor digitorum profundus that is fdp the fdp muscle has the largest origin on the ulna now from where does it gets originated that is it gets originated from the anterior and the medial surface that is from the three fourth of the anterior and medial surfaces if you have a closer look here you can see that this is the medial surface and this is the anterior surface and this is the three fourth part of the anterior and medial surface so the muscle is the flexor digitorum profundus this marked up muscle is the flexor digitorum profundus which gets originated from the anterior and medial 3/4 upper parts that now we have talked about five muscles origination and remaining five are the first one is going to be the pronator quadratus the pronator quadratus is this one it is originating from the oblique ridge on the lower part of the anterior surface so this is the oblique ridge in the lower part of the anterior surface from where the pronita quadratus gets originated now let us tilt our bone towards the posterior side that is towards the posterior surface and towards the posterior border now see this one i hope this is going to be clear see this is separated okay i have separated this so that you are not confused this is another muscle and this is another muscle we have already talked about this muscle which is your which one flexor digitorum profundus right now we are going to talk about the posterior surface only see only this much the four markings here the first one is going to be the extensor carpi ulnaris this one okay the extensor carpi ulnaris which is going to be originated from the posterior border this line this black line is going to be the posterior border from where the extensor carpi ulnaris is getting originated now let us talk about the last three muscles origination in group okay from above downwards in the posterior surface we have three muscles originating i said from above downwards that is first this one then this one then this one so the first one is your abductor pollicis longus then you have extensor pollicis longus and then you have the extensor indicis just remember it is going to be a double e and here we will have two p's that is pollicis 2p and 2l's that is pollicis longus so the first two are same just the difference is one is abductor and one is extensor so what is going to be the name it is going to be abductor pollicis longus this is extensor so extensor pollicis longus and the third one is your indices that is extensor indices 
so that is all about the origin let me help you recap again the first one is the supinator from the supinator crest turning to the medial side to the medial part of the coron uh, coronoid process we have the pronate arteries and flexor digitorum superficialis this side we have the flexor carpi ulnaris which originates from the medial side of the olecranon process and from the posterior border now the largest origin is going to be the flexor digitorum profundus which is going to be originated from the anterior and the medial surface then going down we have the pronator quadratus getting originated from the oblique ridge on the anterior surface then talking about the last three muscles last four muscles which are going to be in the posterior surface the first one is the extensor carpi ulnaris from the posterior border then the three muscles in the posterior surface above downwards is going to be abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices so that is all about the origins on the ulna bone now let us talk about the accessory structures we have at least 3 to 4 accessory structures attached on the bone but i couldn't mark them because we have the attachments already been marked that is the insertions and origins that's why i could mark only one which is the oblique cord this one have a closer look this is the oblique cord which is attached in the ulnar tuberosity the next important structure that we notice here is going to be the intraosseous membrane as i already told you the intraosseous membrane attaches to the intraosseous border and now in the case of ulna the lateral border that is the sharpest border is your intraosseous border so you will have the intraosseous membrane attached here then talking about the next structure we have the capsular ligament of the elbow joint which would be attached to the margins of the trochlea to the olecranon process and the coronoid process that is here this is how uh, you have your elbow joint right so here you will have the capsular ligament of elbow joint then you will have the ulnar collateral ligament that is in your styloid process the ulnar collateral ligament would be present in the styloid process this process that is the styloid process you will have the ulnar collateral ligament of the wrist so that is all about the accessory structures hey guys that is all about the attachments on the ulna bone now we would be talking about the clinical anatomy related to the ulnar bone talking about the clinical anatomy we see three fractures one dislocation and one deformity related to the ulna bone so talking about the first fracture that is going to be the fracture of ulna see the fracture of ulna can occur either alone that is only the fracture of ulna bone or it can occur with the radius fracture as well like you can have radius and ulna both fractures together otherwise you may have only fracture of ulna alone the second fracture that we talk about is the fracture of the olecranon process this process right it is very common fracture and this is caused due to the fall on elbow okay so on the fall of elbow you have a fracture of the this one olecranon process the third fracture that we talk about is your fracture of the coronoid process that is this process this fracture is very uncommon and usually occurs in case if it occurs it occurs with the elbow dislocation so we have talked about three fractures that is fractures of ulna fracture of olecranon and fracture of coronoid process now talking about the dislocations we have dislocation of elbow now how does it occurs is it occurs due to fall on the outstretched hand that is due to fall on the hand directly now what is the position of ulna over here sorry what is the position of elbow here is elbow is slightly flexed okay the elbow gets fixed into slight flexion and this olecranon that is this part the olecranon shifts posteriorly that is backwards this is what happens in the dislocation of the elbow joint now talking about the deformity we have a deformity which is known as the medlang's deformity the spelling goes like m a d e l u n g apostrophe s that is medlang's deformity 
what happens here is there is subluxation that is the displacement of the lower end see this is the lower end there is dorsal or backward displacement of the lower end of the ulna due to which we have a deformity which is known as the maid lungs deformity that is all about the clinical anatomy of the ulna bone so hey guys in today's video we talked about the attachments on the ulna bone that is the origin insertions and the accessory structures and then we talked about the clinical anatomy of the ulna bone and that is all that we see in this video hope it was clear and hope you have no doubts in case you have any doubts please comment down in the comment section below also give this video a thumbs up like and share and subscribe and keep supporting people and as always reminding the notes would be uploaded on my insta page on my tele page as well the link for my insta and tele page would be in the description please check the description below until the next video stay safe stay home